What's going on, guys? It's another episode of Don't Quit Your Day Job. You know me. I am your host, comedian Maxim Allen. Today is January 2nd, 2022. I am in my parents' place in Denver, Colorado. I am awaiting my delayed train with my lovely guest today. She's back. She promised to be delightful. <laughs> Give it up for Lee Lan. Hello. Hello. I'll be delightful. I'll be pleasant and normal this time. <laughs> <laughs> so at the top of the episode, guys, I do want to say that um, I'm recording this on the on a heel on the heels of a uh, really um, tragic situation up in Boulder County. Um, there was a, f- a pretty devastating set of fires that destroyed a bunch of homes up here, and I'm pretty close to where it happened. We saw the light from the flame. Yeah, from from the porch here. It was devastating. Look it up, but I just want to say, if you're listening to this right now, I encourage you to look up the fires and donate where you can because 600 or more homes were destroyed um, over the course of this. It was and, all uh, down to the ashes. Yeah, it is devastating. But I just want to say, start the new year right on the good foot and donate to whoever is de- coordinating relief eff- efforts right now. I think it's important. So, um, but other you, than that, you ended up you. Of course, like yes, everybody, please go, please go donate. But you're like, I want to, I want to start the year right. So here's the devastating news for you guys. <laughs> Starting the year right is uh, doing something good for other people. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> and anyway. go shovel the snow, uh, in front of your neighbor's house. <laughs> Be a good Samaritan. <laughs> so we've been, uh, we've been uh, for the listeners. We've been back in Colorado for like two weeks. And just been hanging out, chilling. Just chilling. Have not thought Full about comedy vacation at all. mode on. So this this episode we're recording. I didn't. I wasn't able to get um, the guests I wanted to while I was out here because I'm a backup some, plan. She's a backup plan. I'm a backup <laughs> plan. I'm only a plan B. I feel so special. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this is just, this might be a bit more chill. Not 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 as strict of a structure as like because you guys what you most. Hear. I assume most people who listen to this kind of know. What's going on? What's going on already? Yeah, but yeah, so uh, if you're listening, go donate. If not, um, you should listen to this. If you are listening also, we're just going to dive into it, I guess. You know, I I know you asked me what did I want to talk about Mm -hmm. um, earlier. Why? I think we should talk about 2020. No, I mean 2021. (laughs) Oh, 2020. No, not What happened, like... Highlights of you and me in 2020, okay. the accomplishments, the good moments, mo- memorable memorable moments, and things we wish we could improve on, and some like little practice for a vision board for 2020. Okay, too. okay, that sounds good. We'll do a we'll do a 2021. Uh, don't quit your day jo- day job if I wrapped. Um. <laughs> I'm you're one of the I'm one of your most loyal listeners <laughs> on my Spotify uh, for your 2021 this is my top listen podcast that's so nice I listen to so nice. 44 Thank you so much. episodes wow yeah 44 out of 70 44 <laughs> out of 52 <laughs> Oh, uh, but yeah. So let's start with you then. What's your what would be a 2021 highlight for you? Okay. Um, I'm gonna go grab my phone real quick. Are you? And f- oh, it's right there. I'm gonna okay. go through my photos. All I right. but I already know what I want to start with because last year this time I remember I remember what I was doing and what you were doing. I had COVID. <laughs> yes, and you, <laughs> I was crying because I thought, oh, he's not gonna make it because the first time he got COVID, I made fun of him. I laughed at him. This time, this is my. I made it about me. I thought it's my karma, you know. <laughs> and you were building um, Gundams. Yeah, I was building a lot of Gunpla models. Mm-hmm. I, I still have to get a professional builder on. I think oh that'd be a really exciting God. episode. <laughs> yeah, and I'm going through. I'm going back to my phone. But yeah, I remember this and time to, we went to Sex and Museum last year. Oh yeah, the Museum of Sex. Museum that was of some, Sex. That was January as well. We went right after. I was done having COVID. Oh, yeah. And uh, it was not that great. It was kind of disappointing. (laughs) Oh, another thing happened last year, January, was the, what is it called? What what did you call this? Oh, my gosh. (laughs) She just showed me a picture of the QAnon shaman guy at the Capitol riots. (laughs) The insurrection. 
Yeah, that that happened. That was not something we were a part of. No, so but when- <laughs> it just I I saw this. It just like what's his name? He looks like um the car- the the actor who plays the king of the sea, Aquaman. <laughs> the king of the sea. I don't know about that. I think that's giving him too much credit. <laughs> oh wow! And we met Roku. Oh, that's right. For the first time, we met Anchun's dog Roku. If for you the first heard, time. if you listen to Anchun's episode, she got a super cute puppy, King Cavalier, and we met her puppy the for the first time. Yeah, that was, that was a big moment. Roku looked like this back then. Oh, he was so small. Oh my god, I know. <laughs> You're gonna show a bunch of pictures on an audio only podcast. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just <laughs> we can also post pictures of Roku for this episode. So okay, so personal highlights. What were what were your greatest hits of 2021? Um, in January, I think is uh, I started Who Hurt You. Oh, you started in January. Yeah. Wow. Because we were planning it. I remember. Um, here. Actually, he, in this in this house, in my parents' place. Yes, were discussing last year it. here. Yeah, oh, we okay. were planning for it, and um, we started. Who hurt you? When it, at the beginning, it was um, online. It was a virtual show only. For those who don't know, what's who hurt you? Who hurt you is a show I produced with my friend Chris Sure. She was also on one of the episodes. Uh, give it a listen and um. So we this is a show where like comedians not just talk about their jokes. They also talk about who hurt them. And um it's been fun. Yeah, so you started the Zoom show and then around when the vaccines came out, that's when you moved it to an in-person show, right? Yeah. How's that show going? Uh it's on pause at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um cuz like to be honest, when I had the idea of the show, I was really excited about the concept of who hurt you. Mm -hmm. And I didn't pay attention to what else around the show that also need to be done in order to have a sold out show. Yeah, yeah. What what kind of things do you have in mind now? To begin with, you you need to have a regular venue you do your show at all the time. Right, right. One of the reasons who hurt you kind of like is sometimes it's a miss. Sometimes we get a hit. Is because we change our location way too often. Yeah, yeah. That's and just true. like we don't have a home base for the show. Right. And that's one thing. And um, I didn't learn. Like, I'm not very good at social media promotion. Right. That's something I had to learn. It's the worst. It's so hard. Later <laughs> on, I, that's some. I start to actually oh. Like have idea on how to promote the show, and around October, twenty twenty one. Yeah, <laughs> that's like <laughs> that came around in my mind way too late. So the show is on pause right now, and I'm on vacation mode. So when I get back to New York, I'm gonna start to like look, for, put my feet on the feet on the ground, start to look for a venue, and start from there. Yeah. I mean, I think the I've told you this before, but the concept of who hurt you, I think, is like a really, really good idea. Mm-hmm. It's just a matter of getting the other elements yeah. together has, to make it a good show. It has because before, who hurt you is like, it's like the second regular show I, second real show yeah. I produced. Mm-hmm. The first one was with you, Little Pen yeah. Production, and that one was more like. In 2020, nothing was going on. We're inside for too long. They're just like, let's just do this. So I bought a speaker, which is also the same thing we use for a mic. And um, we used for a mic. We just went to a park. Like, whoever sits down is our audience. And that was more like a small town radio. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, My previous podcast. With a lot less effort and commitment. Yeah, I think the Little Panda show, I think, is also a good precursor to my show, which mm-hmm. also started this year, mm-hmm. Two Virgins with David Dobbins. Yeah, let's, let's talk about Two Virgins. Because I think, I think the show with you, like doing the outdoor show. It ended because um, 
I just said Maxim is not a good team player for me. Oh. You know, I think. We'll, no, I'm kidding. I love we, you. I love you too. We did uh, outdoor shows for a long time in the park, and then the park got too chaotic, so we moved it to an even more chaotic place on the at Dumbo. Oh yeah, it's beautiful though. It's beautiful, and then once the once it started getting colder, there was no one to listen to the comedy show at Dumbo, and you can you can hear. So we you moved. Not hear the jokes, but you can hear the wind. Yeah. So. Oh. We moved, um, moved to the indoor for like, what? We actually had like we three. Had four. We had four indoor mm-hmm. shows, and until then, this, and two more got canceled. Until this place kicked us out. Yeah, they and just didn't reply to our email, and just which is fine. I get it. Fine. I think we had like we had like a couple really good shows, but mostly really bad shows, and that was fine. No, no, no. I had fun. Let's put it in this way. Mm. Comics had fun. Yeah, comedians yeah. on the show had fun, but it's not it's not an open mic. It's still a show. The show requires audiences. So, but yeah, I think like when you don't have audiences coming in and you don't know how to bring extra audiences in, that's like so frustrating. And like two virgins, a lot of the times we the only reason we have audiences. It's because people in the bar come watch. <laughs> Meet up. <laughs> or like we go and like bark and it's still, we still don't have a grasp on how to like organically. Make it a party. Organically bring in people from like the internet, basically. Yeah. We just are not both, att- we just are not attractive enough. <laughs> <laughs> We're not hot enough to have sh- sold out shows. Is that what you're saying? That's not true. We know people that that are not hot. <laughs> we have sold out shows. But yeah, I think Maybe uh, their brains are hot. I think, um, in hindsight, I think a lot of the two virgins shows were like 2021 highlights for me. Mm-hmm. Only because it's like, even though I haven't been booked a ton this year, which is fine, it's part of the comedy journey. Like every week, I got to be a real comedian at Two Virgins. Come on, man! And some of these, some of these shows were like so much fun to do. So I'll take that as a win in my book. You know, mm-hmm. you know what? It, what else is um? Here's a also February twenty twenty one. We had dumpling party. Not dumpling party. We had a dumpling dinner. Chinese New Year. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> you say that like Chinese New Year doesn't happen every year. <laughs> uh, well, March fifteenth, Sasha was on your podcast for the first time, and he took off his pants in our apartment. He did take off his pants in our apartment, mm-hmm. and um, Maxim got a really good headshot. Oh yeah, yeah, that was early, early this year. I remember. I feel like when I got COVID. It was like really bad in the beginning of January because we—that was the time when everything in New York was shut down. So there's nowhere to go. Even if, even if I didn't have COVID, there was nowhere to go hang out. Like, and so everyone was still doing outdoor shows. <laughs> and it was brutal and so cold. And I remember yeah. Shot the Yas, who has been on this show, gave me a spot to host one of her shows after I got COVID in January. And it was like a lifesaver. Too bad I was not there. It was a lifesaver. I was like, oh my God, I'm a real comedian again. <laughs> and oh, then, uh, sorry. And then that one, I think, was from Dan Frank's show, Comedians <coughs> Under the Stars, that, mm. where I got the good headshot. I think so. Oh, and in April, I went to uh, my first American wedding with you in Georgia, Savannah. And that's our first road trip together. Yeah, that it was good. Uh, shout out to Kelsey and Matt who got ma- married. Who got married? <laughs> it's like <laughs> congratulations on them to get married, but it's like does it deserve a shout out? There are people getting married every day. It was a highlight of our year. Well, so well, if it was them. not them getting married, I wouldn't. We wouldn't go on that trip. So <laughs> it was cool. So we... I cried at the wedding. Yeah, that was good. You didn't. <laughs> what was that? That was like a thirteen-hour drive. I oh, drove yeah. the whole so way in one shot. For driving. Oh, and um, what was it? I remember. Oh, hold, on. I'm looking for this photo. I can't. Never mind. Um. Yeah, I think the road trip was fun too, because I think because our we we live in Brooklyn, we don't get those fun other American like treats. That you do on a road trip, right? Like drive through Starbucks, <laughs> like, <laughs> drive through food. Them, one of the favorite things we do when we're out in New York City, we go 
to Starbucks or drive through Starbucks. <laughs> it feels like such a luxury. <laughs> such a luxury. Like <laughs> suburban adventures. Oh, also that's where I at that wedding where when they start when they start to play Sweet Caroline. Mm-hmm. That's where I I like I only seen people dong 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 together on TV mm-hmm. before. I've never I'm like, "Oh, they actually do that." I love it. and that's that's where I basically got my for base my new opener, yeah, my, one of my favorite <laughs> favorite opener for mm-hmm. this year. Yeah, I mean, I didn't realize you figured that out at the wedding. <laughs> they were saying "dong dong dong" together yeah. collectively, voluntarily, delightfully. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's great. Yeah, that one was fun. Savannah, how would you rate Savannah as a city, as a place you've been this year? Um. I would give I I give a ten. Why not? Ten. Why not? Because like it, it's a the place is a place as its own. I didn't get to know the people or anything like that. The city was beautiful. The oysters were great. The barbecue ribs were great, and also just like you know what, that's such a pro profound memory I have with you. Mm-hmm. So why not? It's my memory. I love it. It's a ten. <laughs> It was fun. What is for you? It was, I, I really liked Savannah. If you give it less than 10, I will take that personally. <laughs> he only didn't give it 10, it's because he went to there with me. Yeah, I and mean. And I'm too demanding. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was great. I really loved Savannah. I think it was a super cool place. I really liked the beach, Tybee mm-hmm. Beach over there. That was super fun. We walked on the beach for a long time. Oh, I brought my mace to the wedding. Remember? Oh, that's right. Oh my so gosh. it was a- April. It was like when anti-Asian hate crime was at its peak. Mm-hmm. And I was so scared. I'm like, if anybody tells me to go back to China as wedding, I'm going to mace the shit out of them. It never happened. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, yeah, why would it happen? Almost disappointed. <laughs> Let's see what else happened in April. Oh, I started doing um, my live podcast shows at the Tiny Cupboard. Whoa. So I had a series That of... was a highlight mo- for you, for sure. Yeah. I mean, it didn't quite work out like how I planned, but I will say we had some great podcasts come through. So basically, every week I had a new podcast come in. I would do the What's equipment the and the recording. the fighting dude? Oh, yeah. We had um, Art Kai and... I hope I don't get his name wrong. I think it's... Uh... What is it? It's Fernando Ruiz. That's what his name was. Their their podcast, Teach Me Good Podcast. They had a live show and they brought in this guy named Blazin Lion from the Bronx, who's a luchador. And he came on and it was great because at the podcast live show, when they brought him up, he like jumped on all the bent the pews and the tiny cupboard wow. and like growled and like jumped around. I got a That's video of it. That's great. And that was super dope. That was a highlight. And then the next big highlight was um, having uh, two nosy meerkats. That was Lucas's birthday show. Oh, yeah. So we, we did live two, two nosy meerkats. And that was tons of fun. I had so much fun because it's Lucas's birthday. So Gabby and I and Chris Sher, we went to shopping to Party City to get some birthday stuff for Lucas. It was so much fun. It's I still funny have pictures. Because every single one of these people is... A former podcast guest. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you really utilized all of your friends. All of them. All I, of our close friends. I got I to gotta find people for the pod, you know? I got to <laughs> use them all. I will also say around this time, that's when uh, the tree in our backyard started. The, the mulberry berries. tree. Oh, yeah. We discovered we have a mulberry tree in our backyard, and Lee was eating the berries, and I told her not to eat the berries because in Colorado, it's all delicious. the berries are poisonous, but she insisted you could eat them. I taste, I try my best to taste all the berries, you know, fruit, they're the candy of the nature, so why not? Yeah, so it worked out, but we, we got, what, gallons of these berries? Like, so many berries mm-hmm. on this tree. I still have frozen mulberries in the fridge. Look at this. What do you got? What are you showing me? Oh my God. <laughs> Our dear friend Mo Singleton. Uh uh on April twenty-fifth. Uh, I was at home with Maxim. We got I got a call from our friend Mo Singleton. He was also a former guest on the podcast. Yep. <laughs> he said he was doing this uh cleansing ritual. Mm-hmm. And it's basically some er some herbs. Spiritual and- cleanse. Spiritual cleansing. Exactly. And 
he has to pour hot water. Uh, that's with it was like herb. an herbal remedy. He poured it over himself, and then he was like sick for he like was, two days. He was so <laughs> sick, and um, he's like, how tall is him? He's like six three. Six he's four. super tall to me in my like comparing to me. And I've never seen this man so weak. He <laughs> he called me. He basically like there was no energy in his voice. And um, we went over. He's like, um, I'm. I did this uh spiritual cleansing. When he started to to say spiritual cleansing bath, I was not sure where where it was going. He's and he said, I got really sick. I'm really weak. Can you come help me? Yeah. <laughs> and we got there. He was like lying on the couch, but when he called me, he couldn't even get up from the couch. <laughs> and we tucked him in. And he was like, "Can you bring that and that and that and that from the table?" He just like completely out of it. You know, I thought it was so funny. It's so funny. It was so funny because he brought us to, to it, himself. Like at the time, I was like, "Man, I think he, I think he was all right. I think he could figure that out by himself." But then this week, I got the flu. For like a oh, day, you need peop- yeah. And then I realized, like, oh no, like that's what there you was need a moment. Max, Max, so Maxim got really sick, and there was a moment he he was like going to you were going to bath, I go into the bathtub, I yeah. think, and you were like, can you bring this and that and that and that for me and put them here and here and here? I was like, oh, this is a Mo Singleton moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so go check out Mo Singleton's episode. He talked about selling t shirts and doing tie dye. He's, I think his tie dye shirts are in couple those like independent little clothing stores yeah. now. It's pretty cool. It's really cool. Yep. What else happened this year? Mm. Did you have any big ones? Let's see, because I feel like, man, I feel like uh, summer. I just, uh, Campbell came and visited us. Mm-hmm. That was great. That was fun. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then I feel like I've just, like, all I've been doing is just grinding out two virgins, doing this podcast, yeah. and doing my stream with Alex Richards, the Fix oh, the Political this. Compass. Oh, my God. What? <laughs> <laughs> More. Uh... She's showing me pictures on her phone. But yeah. I, th- I think most of the end of this year, became kind of a grind for me where I just like was doing comedy and doing the podcast and just doing the stream every single week. Yeah. And what else? I'm going through my phone. Yeah. It's not interesting to listen to. (laughs) Yeah. We went to MoMA. We went to the MoMA. That was fun. That was July when Kemba was here, which Kemba was also a former guest on the podcast. Yeah, he was he was on the podcast when he was here. <laughs> yes, and uh he looks a lot like Maxim. Okay, what were your lessons learned in 2021? I'm going through the pictures. My lessons in learning in 2021. I think wow, a lot of it thanks to you. But also I started to actually take care of my mental health. Mm-hmm. I started, I know those are like, before I thought those were just, just like basic white girl stuff, you know? But when I actually started to do it, journaling, meditating, and just started to like treat, do self care stuff and do more reflection. And I started to read about forgiveness. Yeah. And I started to, I, I finished 12 books. I finished reading 12 books Mm -hmm. in 2021. Well, 13, because I finished one after I counted 12 books. Mm, They were like, it was different genre. And I started, like, there are 23 more books I started, but I never finished it. Okay. (laughs) So I think, so like that, I think reading about like those philosophy stuff and, um, Psychologists have really helped me realize just how important goodness is. Mm-hmm. It's not just like, oh, like, of course, like, everything we learn from, everything we're exposed to ever since we were a kid is like, be good, do good stuff, do the right thing. But I think for me personally, in 2021, I finally realized the importance for my, for individual mm-hmm. why we should do good because that is goodness on yourself mm-hmm. and um i'm i still get angry sometimes 
I'm less angry. We both got therapists this year. Yeah, Come on, both, Maxim. We both started therapy. Oh, I forgot about that. We, yeah, we we both have. No, we. I don't have one now, but Maxim <laughs> has one. Lee got hers and broke up with hers. <laughs> yeah, it was great. I I think 2021 for me is more like a year of personal growth. Okay, that's good. Yeah, and um, I love it.、Mm-hmm. And I met some new people, and they're all just such. Good human being, yeah, and that made me mentally stronger.、Mm-hmm. And I was in some just—it's not challenging, but you know, for、uh, for somebody like me, a city girl, and also who just never done—it's not never done. I was in some like kind of like physically challenging situation, not the hike,、mm-hmm. and I'm like, oh, I can do it if、mm-hmm. I just put my mind in the right place. I can do it. I think this year I'm definitely more confident. Not where I needed to be, not where me as a person need my confidence to be, but it definitely better is better,、mm-hmm. and um. What are you gonna use that confidence for in the new year? I'm gonna tell myself more. You can do it,、mm-hmm. and I'm gonna try to do something. I'm gonna try to do more things that me in 2021 and in 2020 and in 2019 think that's challenging or just difficult or I don't want to. I'm gonna try to change my attitude. It's like, oh, let's try to see this new thing I haven't done yet. I I don't know what it's like. And I'm gonna tell myself、mm-hmm. I can do it. I'm gonna, I'm try, I'm, because I realized a lot of things I failed to do growing up is just confidence. Is、mm-hmm. even though like there's some dis, the like I was not disciplined with myself enough, or I was being like ah、oh, it's cold or whatever. But mostly, it's because I was telling myself. You cannot do this in this situation. This is not your ideal situation. This is not in your comfort zone. You won't be able to mentally handle it. You won't be able to accomplish it.、Mm-hmm. So a lot of times I start to do a lot of things, but I never finish them because I'm like, I don't think I can do it. What's the point?、Mm-hmm. It's gonna end. Tra- it's gonna end. It's gonna be a failure anyway. Why do I? So that mentality has. It's like. Is deep in my bone. Yeah, it, and I. So you're like learning how to, how to not be like that. Yeah, I don't like at, that attitude anymore.、Mm-hmm. Just like, what's the point? I don't want to just like grow old and just like I didn't do anything because I fear for the failure. Right. That didn't even happen.、Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, how about you, Maxim? Twenty twenty one. How would you summarize it? What would what do you wish to improve? What do you accomplish? What are your your gratitudes? And、um, I think twenty twenty one for me is like I think twenty twenty one. I I really focused in on my projects、mm-hmm. and my weekly things, and your battle tag, and yeah, your and my, <laughs> my hobbies as well. I think I think my hobbies are important. I think they that, are important, dude. I know I make fun of you with your hobbies a lot, but I love you. Love your hobbies. <laughs> Seriously, like you're so into it. You know so much about, and you're you genuinely love it. And you spend time and effort, commit to your hobby, and that brings you so much joy. I love that. I love that. <laughs> I know I make fun, but like toys. But I lo- like your photography, your battle tag, your the thing is, there's so much going to there. Like I know battle tag is not something 
I can. It's not something I can ever <laughs> <laughs> love, you know, because it's just so complicated. But you're, you're amazing. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate the supportiveness for mm-hmm. it because I just have nerdy fucking hobbies. I think it's just, I love nerds. I think it's just getting in touch with my inner child in a lot of ways. <laughs> The last few days I've been playing with the idea of like, should I start a podcast just about like Mecha and like Battletech and Gundam and like Mecha anime and like just a podcast just about giant robots. And I, I like don't think I'm going to. Okay, but good. it's an idea. From a selfish <laughs> point of view, as your girlfriend, that means you that's gonna take us time, a part of us time <laughs> oh, <whatever>. away. <laughs> But yeah, no, it's like I no. Think but if you year, do it, I'll support you. I'll, I think, I'll not listen to it, but I'll listen to thirty seconds. And you don't have to. It's uh. But yeah, I think this year the whole thing is, is this year I came out of winter, coming out of coronavirus, and kind of figuring out the new comedy landscape after the outdoor comedy of two thousand twenty. You know, like I think twenty twenty, me and you had a, we crushed the outdoor comedy for the level we're at. You know, we started the mic. We met a ton of people. It was great. 2020. I mean, our level was like dog shit open micers. Dog nobody shit open kno- micers. Nobody knew. And now I feel like 2021 was good because the landscape changed and we had to figure out new new ways through it. But also I kind of feel like I feel like the urge inside of me to do stand up all the time and feeling insecure that I wasn't doing it all the time kind of quieted down. So now I feel like I ended the year being able to look at what I'm doing and be happy with what I'm doing every week and what I'm accomplishing, even though it doesn't feel like huge steps. I'm not achieving huge goals, but every week that I record this podcast or do another Fix in the Political Compass stream or do another Two Virgins, it feels like I'm stepping in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And that feels good because it feels like I'm finally at a point in my mind where I'm like, oh, I can chill out with the insecurity and with the extra, like the imagined external pressure to do comedy. And instead I can just do, do it as I'm happy with it. And I think that's what's important with I like, I, but I, I do think we both need to work a little bit harder. Yeah. Yeah. We, we definitely we both need to work a lot harder. There's some stuff we can do that we can work harder, but like, I feel like I'm happy with where I'm at. I could definitely do you another mic. You proud of, I'm proud of what I've done so far. Yeah. And I'm proud of everything I've done this year. Like the fact that this is episode like, what is this? This is episode 72. I mean, I'm doing, I'm doing great on this podcast. I you feel one on one conversation with around 65 people. Cause there are like yeah, repeating there's guests. repeats. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's incredible. You get to have one, one 90 minutes conversation. There's so many people who are so into what they do, mm-hmm. and it's just incredible. You built, in a way, a level of connection with all those people. Yeah, it's dope. It's dope. I'm really grateful for this. It's so much fun. You should say thank you. I thank just you. gave you compliments. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean that. Yeah, seriously. But yeah, I'm so, very proud of you. So 2021, I think. I think 2021 is just like finding my little slice of the pie. Mm -hmm. It's not like a big slice, but I have, I have like three things that I really love and I am going to just keep working on them Mm -hmm. and also enjoy some of my childish hobbies on the side. (laughs) (laughs) They're not childish. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of big 2021. I think big lesson, lesson learned for 2021 is something that I don't think you ever you ever stop learning but it's just be be nicer to yourself it's just like my big lesson is i should be nicer to myself (laughs) and get like not be so hard on myself about stuff because i think doing any of these creative things and expecting it to blow up right away or be really successful right away is not realistic works like that literally i mean you know i for all the listeners, I now have a YouTube channel where you can check out all the audio episodes as well. I will be working on video episodes soon. Um, but I started a YouTube channel and I just uploaded all the audios with a picture of the logo. And I already have uh, 55 views. 
but only one hour of watch time, which is fine uh, combined, but it's a start. And I think one thing about having a small podcast is you just have to be happy with every step of the way and small projects, be happy with every little step and just be grateful that like, I'm grateful that if you're listening to this, I am grateful for you. So thank you. Nice. That's nice. You yeah. should say thank you to me as well. Yeah, thank I'm, you. I'm one of your thank you for listening to most loyal listener. Thank you for listening to most of my podcast. <laughs> mm-hmm. You're welcome. I love it. I I actually do enjoy a lot, but personally, I my favorite episodes are all comedy. <laughs> I I I just I generally don't care much about pew, pew, pew. Those are just things I don't care much about but it's fine i love it i think the the comedy episodes start to run together my brain and i love the comedy episodes and i love all the comedians but i need to space them out so that I way i don't i don't get sick of them and i feel like it does them better justice to have a comedy episode every like four episodes instead of like every episode you know oh you know what hmm. you really should put a what's it called completion Together of those people who said, "How do you start your podcast?" Just stop, start with you. So, how did you? Uh, why did you start doing comedy? And then you just put people's. Well, I broke up with somebody. I went through a breakup. So after a breakup, after a breakup, it was a breakup. It was a breakup. Yeah, that was you a know? big lesson of twenty twenty one. Is every comedian starts comedy after a heartbreak? I did. <laughs> There's like few that haven't. What uh, even you? You start comedy. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right? It was not a breakup. Do you th- do you still think about her? Wow, that's <laughs> <laughs> not podcast material. Uh, but yeah, no, I think there. One thing of this podcast is, I think I'm. It's gonna grow. It's slowly snowballing, gaining a little bit more. You're listeners. gonna you're gonna wait till two hundred people said it's after a breakup. And you're gonna make that completion. I don't. Someone has got to listen to all of them. That's dude. It. I'll do it for you. Seriously, <laughs> it's just like it's mostly just in first ten, first five to ten minutes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You were gonna ask me something. Um, what are your twenty twenty two goals? <sighs> I want to be more disciplined with myself. Mm-hmm. Um. What does that look like for you? I've been so I know this is not really an answer to your question. I listened to um Jerry Seinfeld's episode on Kevin Hart's podcast. Mm-hmm. Well, that's not that it was mm, doesn't matter. So basically Jerry Seinfeld said when he was younger, he thought if I exercise every day and do comedy every day, then by age of sixty I will have a he- healthy body. And I'll be out, and I'm a good stand-up comedian. Mm-hmm. I think about that a lot recently, and um, I I want to manage my time better. Yeah, I want to budget my money better. Mm-hmm. I want to. So in 2020, because the pandemic and we just didn't have much things to do, I was almost writing. Every single day. I was writing a lot every single Mm -hmm. day. I didn't finish... I've only finished one legal pad in 2020. Wow. 2021. That's low for you. That's low for me. I didn't... I only finished one small pocket notebook in 2021. That's very low for me. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, because in first, like, three months, I went through multiple of those already. Mm -hmm. In 2020, I finished, like, six or seven legal pads. And another just, like, those, you go to, like, in college, those, like, notebook, Mm -hmm. line notebook. I didn't finish even one. I, like, I finished one exactly. I mean, you're also working a lot more. (laughs) And do you, you, do you write in your phone No, 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 it's just. Is I wrote I wow well, in twenty twenty one I did start to write on my phone a lot more but mm-hmm. you know that everybody's writing process is different yeah for me it's just more efficient when it's pen to the paper mm-hmm. 
And personally, I just love writing on paper. Oh, I hate it. I love it. I hate it. I love that makes the feeling. Sense. So that's why, like, I le I like Lego pads because, like, it's a real. It's like it's really smooth to write on. Yeah, and pens like. The texture of different pens are just so different. It like, I know this is kind of like way too particular, but like, I have my specific joke writing pen. It's, <laughs> it feels different. It's like when I'm like, I even have pens for just different. I'm like writing down when I'm just like listening to my recording, writing everything down. I use. Different type, of, different type of pen, because it just writes faster. I'm not thinking that much. It just. I didn't know you had a specific pen for your stand up. I have two sp different pens, specific pens for different purpose for two for different purposes. For my like my notebooks serve different purposes as well. Okay, what's... I don't like writing. In my, it, I don't. I don't think writing in, like. Typing into your phone, like I know a lot of comedians, they write in their phone. But for me personally, when I'm writing, typing into my phone, that's just me. Like, oh, I have that thought. Let's try to catch that before it goes away. So it's more like, yeah, thoughts, ideas, premises. I just, I, my brain doesn't function well in jokes. Mm -hmm. Was, but I do notice in 2021. I am better at like writing jokes. Yeah, I can. I can just put my thoughts together. I'm like, okay, I have this is what I'm trying to say, and I'm not. I don't think I'm a smart. I'm not like super talented. So before I have jokes, that I go through like. Nine or ten drafts mm -hmm. before it goes to a version like okay, I think this is good now. Now it's like on second or a third draft. I'm like okay, I'm happy with this. This is ready to meet people mm -hmm. now. So you mentioned that you you're better at jokes this year. What are your favorite? What's your favorite joke you've come up with this year? Do you have any highlights? You don't have to share the joke itself. Just tell me which one it global is. Global warming. The global warming joke. Mm -hmm. Which one is that one? Uh, I just want to know which one will come first. Oh my god! <laughs> okay, that that is a good joke. Uh huh. That is a good joke. After uh -huh. all, <laughs> I think I, I think I relate to you. I think getting better at jokes this year for sure. Mm -hmm. This year was big for crowd work for me. Same. I think that was something we both really leaned into. Oh yeah, especially at two virgins, those poor audience members. <laughs> Wow. It really, I feel like that became just a test chamber for me, you, and David to just crowd work oh, yeah. people. <laughs> I am not, like, it's crazy because I am not even, I don't even think, before a, a comedy show now, I don't even think about what jokes I'm excited for. I just think about how excited I am that I'm going to get to talk to audience members more. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah crowd work it's, it didn't even feel like crowd work yeah because it just feels like you, like the point it, is it feels pretty natural in a way the thing is in that room it's like when you have 10 audience members or less you're all just hanging out you also have 10 comedians yeah. sitting around <laughs> but you're all just like hanging out and i think that vibe so of that's like 20 people is a big room if you think about it so like if you have 10 real audience non-comedian audience members and you're really crushing the crowd work with them, it's because it's, it's like an intimate setting. And I think that skill can be translated up to any number of audience members. You just get more and more comfortable with it. Yeah. Oh, now I can crowd work when there's 50 people here, 60 people. Mm -hmm. Move up and up and up. So, I don't know. But yeah, joke writing, definitely improved. I was surprised that I was able to just write chunks of stuff that was all like jokes. I have always been writing chunks. In 2021, I finally started to write shorter jokes. <laughs> think about like my... That is true. Right? I think I started as a mixture. I, I definitely had shorter jokes starting. Mm -hmm. And then lately, they've been just so... They got so long for a little bit. And I think I'm recompacting where my jokes are like a bit longer, mm -hmm. but they're tighter than they were. 
I had like an inflation period. <laughs> <laughs> oh, roast. Roast battles. Oh, roast battles. That's another highlight. thing we both got into oh this year. Oh my God, I got to fucking write a bunch of jokes. I will, Max. I beat Maxim in the roast battle. It's, uh, guys, it's up on YouTube. You can look it up. But it's, yeah. So I'll, I'll post I did a good it. job. Shout out to Belton. He gave me, he helped me. He, well, he didn't help me. He just gave me this joke. I'm like, I love it. I told him, can I use it? He's like, yeah. Did he write the closer? No. Okay, good. The one, uh, Maxim looks like um, Sid from the Toy Story turn, um, turn into Mormon. Discovered, like, something like that. The Mormon joke. Okay. The, the Sid. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The Katon Kato- joke, I came up with it. That's good. I, knew, I know you so well. There's no way other people came up with that joke, okay? I'm really... Maybe Alex, your childhood friend, Alex. Maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think uh I really appreciate that you wrote that your closer. I knew you would appreciate that. Yeah. Um yeah, roast battles is a big one because you roasted Lucas and you roasted me. Mm-hmm. Now you're gonna roast Lucas. No, I'm gonna roast if Lucas. If you think about it like um you're at the moment, you're at the bottom of the food chain. Mm-hmm. Cause Lucas won in between like our like Lucas beat me in our roast battles. Right. And I won the roast battle with Maxim. And Maxim is about to roast Luke. Like, they're going to roast each other. So, uh, let's see if, if we well, can just make, the, make this a loop or make this a leader. So, you, you're one for one. Lucas is one for one. And I'm one for one in our roast so far. I beat Sharia. I lost to you. You lost to Lucas. You beat me. Lucas, Lucas won lost. to you, and he lost against Carlos. Mm, Nola. That's right. But I'm, I, I gotta, I gotta buckle down. I, f- I forgot that was happening until you mentioned. Like we've been on such vacation mode. I know <laughs> that I just hadn't thought. I don't about even it. reply to people's messages. It's, it's something about comedy. Sorry, I'm on vacation mode. <laughs> it's been so nice. It's all we've like. All I do is sleep, eat, chill, watching Harry Potter. Oh my gosh, the. Since the snowstorm, New Year's Eve, I, I've been, we've been chilling so hard. It's so nice. I've been chilling since the second we got on the train. <laughs> okay. And we're actually, we're actually waiting for our train. It's a little delayed right now while we're recording this, but like, what's your thoughts on the train? How did you like it? I enjoyed it. I, I actually prefer train over flights. Mm -hmm. Like planes and driving. I think I'm in the same boat. Because there is so much freedom on the train. There's so much space. And it's just, it feels nice. There's no discomfort. There's no, oh, you're driving too fast. Ice on the road. You know, you worry (laughs) about, you worry about nothing. And you, you gotta like, you gotta get out. Once in a while when the train stops, like five minutes on the platform, you can come to smoke. You can come out to smoke. Just like different little towns and different train stations. It just, it's great. I, I enjoy it a lot. I'm with you too. Even though it takes a long time, especially to get from New York to we were Denver. On, we're on vacation mode. We have time. Yeah. And that's, that's, I think what's nice about it is like, it takes a long time. But what are you doing? You're looking out the window. You're kind of napping. You're watching stuff on your laptop or your phone. You just kind of relax. It's, I, I, I you love it. You basically can lie down almost to 170 degrees. Yeah. The, those, okay, guys, if you're listening, Amtrak, even the non sleeper car seats are. They're sleeper hundred, cars. You just hundred, don't have privacy. A hundred times better. Than like an airplane, you know, you have like a full like two to like three feet of like so foot, much space, foot room, and they recline so far, and you have wall, you have AC outlets, so you can plug in your laptop and your phone, and that is such a sell for me because I love being able to use my laptop on the train. It's so <laughs> nice. I like, love I'm, that I can walk around anytime, wherever. I just walk around. I just stand. Right, like where two trains are connected, like there's a little space. I don't stand in between, but there's some room. It's like, oh, the platform, the this little room space where when you board and um get off the train, that mm-hmm. little space. Yeah, you can stand there, look out the window. It's great. Yeah, it's it's just so it's such a nice thing. Amtrak, please sponsor this podcast. 
But yeah, we'll take another train trip out somewhere on the East Coast because it, it's it's like this was a long Boston. yeah go to Boston. This was a nice train ride, but like when you actually are on the East Coast and you take a train ride, it's just like three or four hours, and it's like it takes actually less time than flying. Because you're not just waiting at the airport or waiting for your baggage. You're just going on the train. Yeah, and I don't know why. Taking a train, just like before you are boarding the train, it just feels a lot more chill yeah, than, yeah. than be going to an airport and everything. Like It just feels so chill, dude. Yeah, so I'm actually looking forward to our journey. Same. It'll be good. I'm glad you like it because I enjoyed it a lot. <laughs> I I thought like when people heard I took the train, they were like, "You what?" And I'm like, "It's gonna be a long time, but it's nice. I'm just gonna watch." They shows. just don't know. And also, it's ignorance. They I mean, just don't know. Uh, bring a pillow if you take the train because it's kind of hard to sleep. I the day we got here, we got here early in the morning. I was wiped out all day, and then I had the best sleep of my life. <laughs> Bring a blanket. Bring a blanket. Bring a pillow. There was someone on our train car on the way here who had an electric blanket plugged into the train. And I was like, that is that's Smart. genius. Yeah. <laughs> Ultimate comfort right there. Also, <sighs> I want to be, I want to exercise more mm-hmm. in 2022. I want to eat healthier. Because those, those, um, Different sickly people your mom told us about that <laughs> really scared me. Like, um, it's real. I'm gonna, yeah, let's just all take care of our bodies a little more. I have a great 2022 resolution for you. Okay, what's what is it? Cut off sugar intake, dude. You drink you you consume t- way too much sugar. Yeah, I should chill on the sugar. I agree. Yeah, that's a good one. I think I'm uh, looking forward to. You, I'm looking forward to die before you. So you need to keep out, he- stay healthy. <laughs> if if you, gonna- if you, if I cut sugar out of my diet, I'm gonna outlive you. So, oh no, that's right. That's what you want. That's my point. No, <laughs> 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 okay, so you want me to be miserable and live life without you and be I, like, no, I think you'll do fine. I think you'll be fine if I die before you. I think you'll find a way to be fine. I'm way too emotional. If you if you die before me, I'm just gonna join ski patrol. That's great. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna run away to the mountains and I'm gonna just march around on a mountain and make sure people can ski safely. Mm-hmm. And think about me at the same time. Yeah, like an old cowboy at a bar. Think about how <laughs> sweet I am. <laughs> Gross. Um, please don't do that to the <laughs> listeners. That's please disgusting. Please be professional. <laughs> please be professional. <laughs> yeah, I think my 2022 goal, right, is uh, I want to get the video podcast for Don't Quit Your Day Job mm-hmm. set up. I want to get I want to get streamlined. I want to get nice and tight and good. Oh, I'm also starting a podcast with David Dobbins. Yeah, don't don't annou- Max- don't announce it until we get it figured out. Okay, and Maxim is going to be yeah. our producer, so you know it will it definitely will go very smoothly. It should be good. It should be it should be fun. Um, it's I, pretty funny. Yeah. So. I don't know. It's going to be a good year. I think this was a good end to this year, this vacation. We just chilled super hard. Next year, we'll take you up like deep mountains. Like I want to take you up like far and like. You ne- If you are taking me somewhere, I'm taking me to a situation I, nor- I've, I'm, I normally don't get myself in or I've never been in that. You should let me know. At least a week before, so I can do my research. Well, if I took you to the mountains, I'm going to take you to like a nice like lodge hotel with a hot tub. Oh, okay. Like, <laughs> I not... thought you were going to take me to hike deep in the mountains. Can I we mean, talk about the hike no, a little let's bit? Not talk about the hike. Can I just complain about the hike? Hike itself. No. I'm going to turn a joke. I'm going to, I, I started, I'm writing a joke about it. You can it. write a joke about it, but Jesus, let's not. But yeah, I want, like, uh, shout out to Maxim's mom. She's so beautiful. She's such a good, she's, her food is so delicious and she's so adorable. She's so cute and she's such a role model. She's 61. She runs every morning, every single morning in the mountain. Not in the mountain in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> and with a color, um, where we're at right now, the snow is like 
How maximum? How much snow is that? Hella. Hella snow. <laughs> no, it's like a couple inches of snow outside. It was deep, and her his mom went to run in the snow because that's what she does every morning. It's incredible. <laughs> yeah, stay fit. You can listen to her episode. She's great. You'll love her. But yeah, so I don't know. This is a good, good year. I don't know. This is a, this vacation has just been like such a nice close. And also, we left uh, for like a little zeitgeist. It's a nice close for us. For the zeitgeist, what's going on right now? Uh, COVID exploded like the day before we left New York City. Like maybe the day after, but it's been like I check this chart every single day, <laughs> every single morning. It's like it's ludicrous how many coronavirus cases there are. Like most people stop their comedy shows and shut down like any type of gathering. So it's like we get to be on vacation. We're not even missing much. Like no, and people here they take putting on a mask so seriously. Yeah, it's just they're not really with it in a lot of ways. It's mm-hmm. just it's just like it's less population density here. So, but they. Wherever you go, you have to wear a mask. I love that. Yeah, I mean, it's good that people are doing that. I do appreciate it. But, yeah, I don't know. Oh, and Maxim had, uh, came up with this uh, dish in 2021 that I genuinely like a lot. Oh, okay. Yeah, because you don't like most of my cooking. My quote unquote Now we're just sad. like our relationship highlight. <laughs> You you don't like most of my quote unquote sad cooking because it's sad white people food. But I came up with this dish that I'm proud of that Lee actually liked, which was incredible. But it's basically like chopped up mushrooms with like garlic and onion, like cooked down. And then when that cooks down, then you put spinach on top of it and like mix it together. So it's like all blend. It's like mushrooms and spinach, and, and then you top. You eat it with quinoa. Yeah, it's really good. It's really it's, good. Very healthy. It's nutritious. It's healthy. And it's just, there's seasoning. There's flavors. It's great. Yeah. Love it. I also think uh, the dumplings you made here are probably one of the dumpling highlights I've had. The veggie dumplings, at really? least. The veggie dumplings here were awesome. I put awesome. pine nuts in your dumpling. The pine nuts was like. a game changer. It's expensive. It's $24 a pound. It's insane. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> But yeah, I, we've had some good culinary experiences this year. Mm-hmm. Where we do, we went to, we've eaten a lot of food this week. We we'll ate a lot of food. We eat a lot of food in general. <laughs> <laughs> um, so goals for 2022, you said you want to be more disciplined with your money and your exercise and... Manage my time better. Because mm-hmm. like, to be honest, I don't need to like... I, because I don't need to wake up very early at this, like, right now, at this moment in my life. So I just wake up till, I just sleep till I have to wake up. And to be honest, I don't like that. Yeah, you sleep until the last minute. Yeah. Yeah, if you woke up, you would have, like, two extra hours in the morning I to know. do stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what... I want to wake up seven forty seven forty five. Yeah, that's pretty every morning. It's pretty now. reasonable because we we go to bed at like eleven thirty. Yeah, so I want to like just do more. Have try to create more time for myself and um, be more social. Like like in comedy, people say you need to work on your own stuff, and then there's the hand. The hang, yeah. The hand and. Uh, for me, I'm like, I feel like I have really solid friends mm-hmm. f- and um, I'm comfortable yeah. with my social circle. But when you're in, when you were in comedy or any kind of those, like, no matter you, I didn't know music people have to do that too. Yeah. They music do. people, <laughs> basically those, if it's like, a creative passion that there's a community for this creative creative passion. You just need to do it. I didn't want to do it because I'm like I because I'm comfortable with them. But the thing is, 
I saw it in a way that scared myself. I'm like, okay, this is my comfortable zo- comfortable zone. Then that I'm not comfortable with that. But there's always this thing until you bring yourself to there to do that. Until you figure out a way to make it comfortable for, comfortable for yourself, it's always gonna be scary for you. Yeah. I so I want to put myself out there more. Hmm. Just, I'm very supportive of this. Yeah, I think we should do, we should both do that because a lot of times it's it's most every time it's never unpleasant. Every time I'm like, I got I saw this friend I haven't seen for so long. I gotta check. I gotta like keep check. What's the word? Catch up. Catch up mm-hmm. with her. Oh, there's this person I want. I admire so much. I just like this pers- person so much. I want to be her friend. And it's all like it's always like, oh, this is great. I gotta talk to more people. I gotta have this interesting those interesting conversations. I gotta see those amazing comedians doing their just like ex just like showing their talent. Mm-hmm. Why not? Yeah. And- yeah. One thing is, I was scared. Not just that. I was scared because like if I do that, I need to come back late. And mm. I don't feel safe. Now I have my taser and, and mace. I'm, I got it. I got myself. That's good. I think one th- you definitely expanding your social circle is really important. Because mm-hmm. I think I meet people at open mics that I do. And we're cool. And I meet new people. And it's great. I think you are kind of more in a routine where you don't meet a lot of new people. But I think it's important, especially in comedy, just because there's always people coming and going in the scene. And it's important to know who... Meet the people who are coming, especially who are coming into the scene and starting, because it's like you just cultivate relationships over a long time, you know. Like, I don't know. I cannot think from that point of view. It's about if I see that from if I see things from that point of view, I have a way to talk it back. Like mm. I, it's mm. important to to stay close with people who you know who are solid yeah. with you. Yeah. So, I can, I know a way to argue with that point of view. So the point of view I need to take is, why not? Yeah, just I guess yeah. it makes sense. Yeah, just kind of go for it. Yeah, just, just why not go for it? And it like, and the thing is, is like all the people you were close to were strangers at one point. So it just takes a jump, and maybe you'll meet another person you end up really liking. That's true. So. Maybe I'll meet a new boyfriend. Oh. No, I love Maxim so much. <laughs> so we're going to probably wrap this up. This is probably like a quicker one. Mm. But um, what what advice do you have for the listeners in the new year? Um, Be gentle with yourself. Don't criticize yourself too much. Remember that you're enough. And we're, we're, whatever the situation you're dealing with, if it's difficult, remember yourself. You're there for a reason. So you belong there and you're enough and you can do it. And always open for new change. No matter it, it's exterior or no matter it's from outside or inside. Because mm-hmm. we need to keep changing for the better. Because in 2021, I noticed People who are older, who are like, I would define, I'm, that's just not a good person. It's because they stopped changing for the better. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to be that. I want to always be better. I want people who are around me, who know me, who, who hold me dearly, are proud of me as a person and as whatever the project I'm on at that moment. Mm-hmm. And find your people, have your good, have your own good supportive system. Just be wise with who you're you're surrounded by, and meditate. It helps. It does help. <laughs> it helps a lot. And um, inner peace is important. Just all the yeah, <laughs> all the cliche, but they're all important. Well, and uh, I hold, hold you dearly, and I'm very proud of you. Mm-hmm. You've come a long way this year. I love you. Good job. I love Thank you too. You. Thank you for, I wouldn't be here without you. Um, yeah, it's my podcast. No, I'm, <laughs> I mean, my personal growth wise, you know, yeah. I wouldn't be where I mentally am at right now 
without you. Mm. So thank you. No problem. I'm glad I could help. <laughs> Are you going to say some gratitude to me? Yeah. Uh, I'm glad that you add some fun into my life. And you add a lot of new food into my life. And you keep me being uh, from being re- recluse a lot of times. What does that for me? <laughs> I like that. I like that you invite people over. I like that you keep us hanging out with friends and make it like, I feel like I, you make more of an effort than I do in a lot of ways. Even though you're trying to like branch out and put yourself out there more. I think you make more of an effort with the people we know. Hmm. So it's, I'm very grateful for that. I'm also, I don't think I was making an effort. I just wanted the people at our place to, to, to feel comfortable. It's good. It's great. You're a good host. Mm, you thank make you. good food. So, mm-hmm. <sighs> but we're not going to discuss the listeners, guys. We're going to ask it for today's episode. I know it's shorter, but kind of a last minute New Year's thing. Um, everyone, please give it up for Lee Lan. Thank clapping. you, uh, Lee. Where can people find you? Follow me on Instagram. I want Pomeranians. I'm not on Twitter. I'm not on YouTube. I'm not on TikTok. I should. Okay. Can I say one more resolution for New Year? Okay. I'm going to decide if I want to start a TikTok account. I don't even have TikTok the app on my phone. Just do food reviews. Start a few food review thing, please. Some type of food channel. You think you will, you think people will enjoy yeah, it? Yeah, you, you'll do, you do great. Okay. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I will say for the New Year, I hope... That you guys have great success in all your projects and experience immense personal growth. And I hope you're not too hard on yourselves. And I hope you have a good time. And thank and- you for, thank you, Maxim, for delivering 20 something episode high quality. Po- well, n- 70 episodes. 70. The one episode, the second, third time I went on your podcast, that one was not a good one. But that's not your fault. That's completely mine. (laughs) Don't go for that. You should delete that. But thank you for delivering 70 high quality podcasts with effort and commitment. And it's it's just amazing because I we live together and we we're dating. I know you. You you have the same heart and mind every week for your podcast. (laughs) That's incredible. Yep. It would be it would suck if I interviewed someone and I was just falling asleep. <laughs> no, you know but sometimes yeah. people have bad days. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, thank you. You're Appreciate welcome. that. But yeah, for the listeners, I also just want to say something I've learned is that um, you know, life changes. Life changes every month, every year. So whatever you're going on right now, what do you got? Whatever you got going on that brings you joy and the people around you, just. Appreciate that because never as you're not hurting little animals, yeah. it's fine or people's feelings. Just uh, treasure what you got, make the most of what you have because you're never going to be right where you are exactly ever again. So just have a good time. Time doesn't wait for anybody. And thank you for listening. Thank and you for listening. If you have extra money, please donate to the victims of the Boulder County fires. Um, I'm going to try to find a link and put it in the episode description, but if I can't, just Google it, figure it out. So donate to them. And for everyone else, uh, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Bye. Bye.